putting in the governor arm. Got the part that, that's external. Make sure that you have your washer to the outside of the case. There is an O-ring, so go ahead and lubricate that. Starting it in the side of the case. Pivoting in the direction for the flat to be able to match the actual governor arm that's on the inside. Fork goes to the top. Just slide it into place. I'm twisting the uh, throttle side that's external a little bit. Put a little thread locker on the bolt. Take it almost all the way in because what you want to do is you want to make sure that you feel that flat. Now that I've got it close, I'm going to be operating this governor arm. Matter of fact, it is in the flat right now, so we can go ahead and tighten it down. And you should feel it getting flatter and flatter and less movement. See, the, the arm cannot pull in or out at this point. It can't be pulled out of the case, so I know that we're inside the, the recess in that pivot arm. And we're going to go ahead and tighten this down to nine foot-pounds. One thing I noticed about this, there was not a single bit of, well, just like there wasn't any grease on the seals, there was no Loctite anywhere. So I'm locked, this is gonna be a diesel engine. It's gonna be vibrating all get out. So everything are probably gonna have at least Loctite blue on it. And, prob and not the head bolts. Everything else will most likely have Loctite on it. When installing fuel pump, I'm gonna go ahead and lubri lubricate the uh, lobe of that. I've also lubricated the roller bearing on the uh, fuel pump. If you'll rotate the crankshaft, as you can see the lobe right here is in a very high upright position. I'm wanting to go ahead and take that lobe and move it to where there's gonna be less of a resistance putting this thing in. You need to watch your arm. There's a, a groove. Uh, I've got my two uh, spacers in here, my two gasket spacers when installing this pump there is a groove inside the case and then you have your uh your fork down here that activates this you got to make sure that you slip it in and try to tilt it forward just a little bit you want to push this as far forward as you can and that will slip inside that tuning fork i can see right now that it is in the correct location and it's moving it. Time to reinstall the back cover. Reinstalling the back cover. Since this gasket has been off, I'm gonna use some uh, three bond. It's a uh, 1184 gray. This stuff is really pretty much designed to go uh, to a case to case situation, metal to metal. It is the snottiest, stringiest stuff you've ever seen. Uh, since this gasket has been used before, I'm gonna go ahead and put a light layer on this. It is probably also one of the best sealing things I've ever seen before. This stuff's pretty incredible. Um, it's what you'll use on a motorcycle between case halves and you know sometimes uh, between the the valve cover, uh, the valve cover and the head side covers. There's a lot of places you'll use this on a motorcycle. And a little dab will do you, and it is super sticky. It's also real good for holding parts into place as well. I mean, it does a really good job of that. It, it's sort of a semi-non-hardening. It, uh, it doesn't ever really get super hard if you've never used this stuff. I highly recommend keeping some in your toolbox. It'll probably wind up being one of, it won't, now it doesn't fill big gaps. It needs to be pretty relatively smooth. Uh, Strings like spider webs. It's pretty crazy. Getting that aligned on there. I'm going to go ahead and change out these gloves, get that nasty stuff off so I can work with my tools. We have our locating dowels put in. Time to reinstall the back plate. There is a bearing in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of grease also on this external seal. 
When installing this governor, you have to make sure that it matches the uh, gears. Uh, you know, so if you feel something in a bind, don't just sit there and force it. it. It should go all the way down. You may have to turn it back and forth just a little bit because that governor gear will have to align and then it should drop onto your pins. If it doesn't, I'm gonna press it in. I just laid this a little bit flatter so I could turn the crankshaft real easy. So as I was turning the crankshaft, the gears aligned inside there from the uh, uh, governor, that plastic governor gear. Now I'm gonna put this back at top dead center. Now we're gonna bolt on this uh, plate. You wanna use a crisscross pattern. Just going to 10 foot pounds this first time. Crisscross pattern. Now we're gonna to go to 29 foot pounds. I went ahead and made me some markings up here, crisscross pattern. Installing a flywheel is always something I wanna do. Uh, I wanna do it dry on the shaft. I don't, some people, I've seen some people use anti-seize and stuff, but <clears throat> now that's really not the location for that. So I always just make sure it's completely dry. If it's a, if it's a good snug fit the way it's supposed to, you'll almost never see them rust up. And this is one heavy flywheel. We need to put this dust shield on before we put the flywheel on. This goes on the dipstick side. We need to put this dust shield on before we put on the flywheel. This bolt, little bolt has to go through before uh, the flywheel because you can't get to it once that flywheel's on. All right, so we have it in place now. Get the flywheel, just gently put it over the key. You should feel it engage. Hold the shaft a little bit to make sure you got it in solid. And there you go. The fans indicated it can only go on one way. as well as the starter cup. There is a, a indention in that starter cup that goes all the way through the fan blades to the uh, flywheel itself. We'll go ahead and get this finger tight. Put something to keep the uh, flywheel from moving through the uh, spring cup. They actually make a retainer for the other side of the crank for these things, but I don't have one that fits a 20 millimeter. And this spring cup, pretty darn strong. It's 55 foot pounds. Next thing to go on is gonna be the head. We do have two locator dowels. Make sure you put those guys in. I usually spin them a little bit just to make sure they're fully seated. Head gasket goes on next. Just making sure that everything is, I've cleaned everything, but I like to double check it as I install it. Make sure that that meets up with your gasket. Ease it on there. I mean these head bolts. I take a literal, a drop of oil, put it on the tops, of these bolts. And since my fingers got a little, just a ever so slight amount left on it, I rub it onto the uh, washers, put the washers back on. 
rub any residual. I'm not getting the stuff real wet, just a slight residual oil on these threads. So that way we don't have any dry metal threads going into those dry aluminum on the head. You get a better torque. Don't forget to put your washers in. And these are a little odd. Everything else is typical, but these are 13 millimeter in a crisscross pattern. First stage is going to be 15 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds. I'm gonna to go to 35. These things were a whole lot tighter than that when I checked them initially. But I feel pretty comfortable. With that poundage, with this size threads and aluminum. Grab your push rods. That bag is for the exhaust. I just tear the tape off. It came off pretty clean. Just a drop of my oil. Make sure you remember which way was top. This was the exhaust side. I'm thinking about it, I went ahead and just put a drop of oil on top of that valve. And take side. Things coming together pretty quick. Now we're getting ready to get some fasteners that really are not that critical. I'll leave torque specs on them. You know, you don't want to don't want to strip anything, but you know, we're we're definitely not in a too much of a torque critical state, except maybe for the uh, fuel pump. Okay, now we're the intake. Tear the tape off. Let's do the uh, intake push rod. Drop oil on the valve, drop oil on the push rod. Make sure you put it in correctly. Correctly is the top side. I'm gonna go ahead and get some oil and drop in from the top in between these two rocker arms to get in there in between all that. Before it ever runs. I'm gonna make sure our engine is on top dead center still. And it is. But I'm gonna keep it pointed your way so you can see what I'm doing. But it is on top dead center. That way we can get these valves adjusted way closer to what they were supposed to be. There is a dowel pin on this rocker. It can only go on one way. Now it'll pivot on that, on that pin until we put the bolt in. This has a lock washer on it, so I'm not putting any Lock tight on this one. Okay, we're gonna go with 15 foot pounds on that. I'm gonna spin it around a few times, put it back on top dead center, and then we'll check the valves again. Intake's open, intake's closed, should be on the compression stroke, and look for 
zero. So you just take a screwdriver, I mean, take your feeler gauge, put it in between the rocker and the tip of the valve. Slowly turn it to where it, all you're looking for is a slight drag. Hold the screw, the adjusting screw, and tighten down the nut. I'm adjusting these at six thousandths because that's mid-range. I mean a seven thousandths. I'm adjusting them at seven because that's pretty much mid-range to where both of, that's both of them's happy zone. I'm gonna tighten those to 15 foot pounds. Double check, make sure they didn't move when you finish doing your torquing. <laughs> 